Welcome everyone to be back on our YouTube channel and today is a wonderful day to talk about globalization. I don't know why, but I just feel like so. But before that, let me introduce you to my friend right here. Hi guys, here's another camera right here, cooler one I'll say. So can you tell me what do you think about globalization nowadays? Well, I think globalization nowadays is very, very important to a lot of countries and industry, especially for trading and exporting goods. Yeah, true guys. For thousands of years, trading and globalization have us to do a lot of different things. Let's take this as far as example. Due to the globalization, the distance between countries seem negligible. That's why the shipping fee or shipping cost is so cheap. So that parts of this product that we are using to film are exported from a lot of country. Let's say the chip is produced in Japan and the cases are produced in China and the clouds are produced in America. And you know, they combine it together to make this phone at the cheapest price ever. Even though this is the Apple, so it's not that cheap. But you get what I mean, right? Yeah, according to the our data organization between 1800 to 2014, the global exporting goods industry has grown for almost 4,000%. You heard it correctly, 4,000%. And it also helps a lot of countries get rid of poverty, hunger, and solve a lot, a lot of economic issues. Okay, yeah, because of those reasons, they will love to talk about the good size of... I thought we agreed on talking about the bad size of well, I thought you agreed on talking well, about... Well, yeah, I know that it has a lot of advantages, but we're not like that kind of president right, who only focuses yeah. on the economic growth. Yeah, economy. we're not like We also guys. care about a lot of other problems especially climate change. Today, I'm proud to stand before you as President of the United States to report that we have delivered on our promises and exceeded our expectations by a very wide margin. It'll start getting cooler. <laughs> I you, wish, just, you just watch. I wish science agreed with you. <laughs> hey, well, I don't think science knows, actually. Because of that, today, we we'll love to talk about the flip sides of globalization. First, we talk about inequality. Next one, we will talk about the environmental issue associated with globalization. Moving on, we will talk about job expectation that happening in most of the developing countries. Next, we will talk about the chain reaction to explain why that COVID-19 now spread much quickly compared to the previous pandemic. And last but not least, we'll talk about cultural diversity in a lot of countries, how the globalization affects a lot of countries to be less cultural diverse. And we're not the only two who would do the talking. We also invite our friends Amira, Leon, and Wallace, same face, to talk about this problem with you all. And let's get into it. Today I'll be talking about inequality due to globalization. Now, the relationship between globalization and inequality is not always straightforward. Whether Brexit, offshoring, or even McDonald's in Japan, globalization is the one core of many issues today. But often, globalization gets too much credit for changing the world, but also gets too much blame. Now, this is especially true of global income inequality. Income inequality is how unevenly income is distributed throughout a population. Now, income and wealth inequality can be measured in two ways. First way is by the Gini coefficient and the second is by the Palmer ratio. Now, the Gini coefficient is a statistic which quantifies the amount of inequality that exists in a population. It goes from a number between 0 and 1. 0 representing perfect equality and 1 perfect inequality. Now, Palmer ratio, on the other hand, is the ratio of the richest 10% of the population's share of gross national income, GNI, divided by the poorest 40% share. For example, the United States GNI coefficient is 0 0.484. The highest it's been for 50 years, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. Now, about 33 million U.S. workers earn less than $10 per hour, placing a family of four below the poverty line. 
Now, one way to one way globalization increases inequality is due to the effects of increased trade. An increase in the trade to GDP ratio means an increase in the volume and the value of the trade between countries and regions. Outsourcing trade in intermediate goods have have expanded over the past two decades. Now, this trend has been the most noticeable in East Asia. International outsourcing can raise wage inequality in not only in outsourcing developed countries, but also in outsourcing developing countries. In addition, cooperative advantage trade can stimulate economic growth and increase per capita income. But it can also lead to an increase in relative poverty. Now, a study done by Freeman and Unsterndorf 2020 found that the median wage for jobs in advanced countries is two and a half times the wage level for jobs with similar skill levels in the most advanced developing countries and five times the level in low income countries now for example in 2008 a chinese manufacturing worker earned about 1 20th the wage level of a u.s manufacturing worker a mexican worker only one sixth now another example is if a country can now import cheaper raw materials from elsewhere then there will be consequences like there will be a decline in domestic supply and in employment and also in real incomes in that industry this can lead to higher rates of unemployment and a decline in real living standards now real wages come under downward pressure and inequality can increase now a second second way globalization increases the demand for and returns to higher skilled workers and lowering the expected earnings of people in relative low skill and low educated occupations. One of the driving forces of foreign direct investment is that resources tend to flow where the unit cost of production is lowest or cheapest. This is the cause with light manufacturing, for example, textile, where a lot of investment is flowing to countries such as Bangladesh, Indonesia, and Vietnam. Now, the FDI creates more formal employment and incomes for people employed in these countries or sectors, but perhaps at the expenses of similar workers in higher income countries whose skills are no longer in such demand. They are therefore at greater risk of unemployment and poverty. Many have been pushed into poorly paid jobs in services. Inequality can also have a negative impact on almost all in society. Evidence gathered by Wilkinson and Pickett in 2009 shows that more unequal societies experience more social and environmental problems across the whole population compared to equal societies. So that is all on my talk on inequality due to globalization. Globalization also had an alarming impact on the environment. There are two major factors on how globalization can affect the environment. The first factor is the increased transports of goods. With globalization, people start to consume products that have been developed in foreign countries, which the amount of fuel that is consumed in transporting these products has led to an increase in the pollution levels in the environment. The increased consumption leads to an increase in the transports of goods, which in turn puts stress on the environment. For example, the gases that are emitted by, from the aircrafts have led to the depletion of the ozone layer, which apart from increasing the greenhouse effect. The industrial waste that is generated as a result of production have also been laden on ships and dumped in oceans, 
which this has resulted in the deaths of underwater organisms and have deposited many harmful chemicals in the ocean. Plastic is also of immense use when it comes to packaging and preserving food goods that are to be exported, which this has led to an increased use of plastic and has caused widespread environmental pollution. The second factor on how globalization can affect the environment is the economic specialization. Globalization allows nations and geographical regions to focus on their economic strengths, like how Malaysia focuses on importing electronic devices to other countries. Globalization allows countries to turn towards their trading partners for goods they don't produce themselves. This economic specialization often boosts the productivity and the efficiency of a country. However, over-specialization often led to serious environmental issues, often in the form of habitat loss, deforestation, or natural resource overuse. For example, the illegal deforestation in Brazil due to an increase in the country's cattle ranching operations, which requires a significant land for, for grazing, and overfishing in coastal areas, which has significantly contributed to the decrease in fish population and oceanic pollution. In conclusion, the de increased greenhouse gas emissions, ocean acidification, deforestation, and other forms of habitat loss, climate change, all of these fact factors has resulted in the reduction of biodiversity around the globe. Now, according to the World Wildlife Fund's recent Living Planet report, the population sizes of all organisms, including mammals, birds, fish, amphibians, and reptiles, all of these organisms have decreased 68% since 1970. So, here are some points that globalization caused job exploitation. First, according to Masterclass, Globalization allows businesses to increase jobs and economic opportunity in developing countries, where the cost of labor is often cheaper. However, overall economic growth in this country may be slow or stagnant, and even exploit the welfare of workers like underpayment. In labor exploitation situations, workers are regularly underpaid, with employers paying less than minimum wages and offering no remuneration for overtime. Occasionally, Employers will even apply their own rules to keep money to themselves, such as imposing preposterously high fines for phone call making during work or for visit to the doctor. According to the central bank's 2018 annual report, Malaysian workers are paid less than their other regional peers, such as those in Singapore and South Korea. To illustrate this point, if a Malaysian worker produces upward worth $1,000, the worker will be paid $340 for it. The corresponding wage received by a worker in benchmark economics for producing the same output worth $1,000 is, however, higher at $510.87, the report said. In addition, long working hours is happen all the time. There have been cases in which employees are made to work extremely long hours, up to 16 hours each day with only one brief break for up to 6 or even 7 days a week. Long travel time are often not included in the working hours. According to New Street Times, a survey has found that Malaysian employees are overworked and sleep deprived, with 51% suffering from at least one dimension of work-related stress, as well as 53% getting less than 7 hours of sleep in a 24-hour period. Beside According to Forbes, globalization has led to exploitation of labor. Prisoners and child workers are used to work in inhumane conditions. 
safety standards are ignored to produce a cheap good. There is also an increase in human trafficking. Here are some examples. First, dangerous or unhealthy work. Employees in any industry may be faced with dangerous or unhealthy work to some extent. Example, include retrieving products from boiling water or working in a space with a fire hazard. A group employer, however, will protect employees against the risk that they may be encountered. This protection is not offered in case of labor exploitation. In fact, it is the often illegal employees who are made to perform such dangerous work. According to Rand Corporation, 61% of American workers perform repetitive or intense physical work. This work can include moving heavy loads or maintaining painful position. More than half are exposed to hazards such as loud environments, extreme temperatures, hazardous materials, or unhealthy air. The second is housing. Hardworking people need a place that they can regain their strength. Nevertheless, some employees are forced to make do with degrading, inhumane housing, for which they are charged exorbitant price. Third, physical and psychological pressure. There are employers who put pressure on their staff through abuse, blackmail, and threats. Some might forbid their employees from going to a doctor or the hospital. Other restrict their employees' freedom of movement, for example, by confiscating their passport or identity card, thus keeping their employees in prison outside of working hours. Not only that, globalization allows infectious diseases to rapidly spread around the world. Now we live in an ever more connected world through international travel, politics, economics, culture, and etc. That is why globalization, including global exposure to infectious diseases such as monkeypox, SARS, and the most recent COVID-19, is becoming more apparent. As humans began traveling overseas and across lands, which were previously isolated, research suggests that diseases have been spread by all five transmission modes, which are airborne, waterborne, bloodborne, by direct contact, and through insects. With transportation vehicles, globalization has enabled fast mobility of people and goods around the globe. The unprecedented volume and speed of human mobility are perhaps the most conspicuous manifestation of the present era of globalization. Princeton University's Stephen Redding and Associates Authors of the well-researched 2020 study, Globalization and Pandemics, argues that globalization affects the spread of disease and its economic impacts given people's knowledge of the disease and the risk of death. To perform their analysis, they apply models that can predict international trade flows and SIR model that predicts the spread of infectious diseases. <clears throat> It is worth noting that when the people are unaware of the threat of a disease, globalization increases its spread even between healthy countries. Globalization also increases the severity of the pandemic even between countries that have similar healthy disease environment. In a nutshell, with the advancement of science and technology, globalization helps spread infectious diseases around the globe. Let's talk about cultural diversity and let's look at Vietnam as an example if you're so right for me to talk about my country in this part because I do think that Vietnamese people are facing or are suffering from what we call the nationality crisis or national crisis. Where's that? Identity crisis. Yeah, the correct word, identity crisis. So first, let's talk about the clothes. The way people wear things today really got me confused. I remember when I was young, my grandmother used to say to me like this. When it was your age, all the girls had to wear outside, and we love wearing that. Now I go out, I only see short skirts. What a shame. Our tradition has been disappearing because of your generation. 
This is a bigamy of cultural discrimination, in my opinion. I cannot even differentiate a Vietnamese and a Westerner anymore. Yeah, she was correct. You know, when I was in high school, the most common complaints that I heard was not coming from my teacher about my behavior, ironically, but it was coming from my girlfriend's, I mean, my girlfriend's friend. I didn't have a girlfriend in my high school. That's a sad story. But never mind. My girlfriend used to say they really hated to wear outside because most of high school students, most of high school girl students are asked or are forced to wear outside on Monday. Well, that caused a lot of trouble to them because outside is not a comfortable thing to wear. Even though outside is one of the most traditional and it has a long history in Vietnam until one country declared that outside was originally their idea, just like the way that they declared that kimchi was originally their invention caused a lot of anger. could either wear some kind of leather jacket, jean jacket, colorful shirt, hoodies, sweaters, something mixed between sweater and hoodie with like a hood, tank top, long sleeve shirt, bikini. What? Seriously? Well, uh, I'm just joking. It's not bikini, but they wear anything but outside. And according to my grandmother, that is a Vietnamese culture discrimination. And it doesn't happen just in Vietnam. In the past, when you go out on the street, especially in the 1900s, you would see that people in the United States, and you could recognize them by their style, their fashion. When you go to Japan, you would see people wearing kimono. But nowadays, the way people wear clothes really, really the same. You can't really differentiate them by the way they wear the clothes. Especially if you walk on the Vietnamese street, you cannot even recognize that you are even walking on Vietnamese street because people wear things the same ubiquitously. Well, in conclusion, we have over some major problems associated with globalization. First, Amira did talk about inequality that has been happening almost all around the globe. And then, Leon talked about the environmental issues, how some of them have been more severe than ever since the climate change and pollution due to globalization. And then Wallace talked about the job exploitation in the developing countries. And then Leo appeared again and talked about the chain reaction and he explained how COVID-19 spread much more quickly compared to all the previous pandemic. And then we all know that who is the most interesting and funniest person in this video. Well, you can give me a picture of those guys. There are so many other problems associated with globalization. That's the reason why we believe that Brexit is one of the wisest decisions that UK has ever made after being in the EU for almost 47 years back in like 2016, right? Yeah, 2016. Well, why? Because we believe that every country now should have a chance to stand on their own feet to be independent and not relying on other countries anymore. And remember this, Mr. President, even though the economic growth is very important, all the problems such as climate change matters as well. Thank you for watching and making this so far. I will see you in other projects or other videos. Well, you have my YouTube right here. You can check all the videos out. I made funny stuff right here. Thank you for watching. See ya.